Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to kindly find your seats. Good evening, sir. This way, please. Oh, my apologies. Evening, Haytham. Reginald? I can't tell you how happy I was to hear they'd mounted this revival. Gay's best work by far. Have you seen it before? Once. My father brought me here as a child. Though I remember little of it. I don't suppose tonight will afford me the luxury of a proper viewing either. No, I'm afraid it won't. On to business then. Do you see him? And the slate, because he's so great, thinks his trade as honest as mine. He's seated in one of the boxes above. The stairs are watched. You'll need to find another way up. I already have. For it is but fitting that we should protect and encourage streets, since we live by them. Sir, Black Maul at set word of trial comes on in the afternoon, and she hopes you will order matters so as to bring her off. A thousand so pardons. So sorry. You may satisfy her that I'll soften the evidence. Tom Gag, sir, is found guilty. My lazy dog. When I took him the time before, I told him what would come to if he did not mend his hands. This is death without reprieve. I may venture to book him. Poor Tom Gag. Forty pounds. Let me slide I'll save them from the plantation. If I could get more by a staying in. Plenty have brought more goods into our lot here than any five of the gang. And in truth, it is a pity to lose so good a customer. If none of the gang take her off, she may be in the common course of business. Live at twelve months longer. I love to let the women escape. A good sportsman always lets the end of his life the free the game depends on it. Besides, here the law allows us no reward. There's nothing to be got by the dead of it. Except our wives. Tis warm and that seduces all mankind. I really must report Jeremy's really burning up the boards tonight. He's a mob. Besides, certainty gives a man a good air upon his trial and makes him risk another without fear or scruple. But all the way, for it is a pleasure to be the messenger of comfort to friends in affliction. But it is now high time to look about me for a decent act. Hey, Ethel. You 
should have come to me. We would have found another way. Yes. But then you would have known. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. As am I. And how was the opera? Rather dull, truth be told. Shall we be off then? Aye. To Fleet and Bride. By your command. Gentlemen, I hold in my hand a key, and if this book is to be believed, it will open the doors of a storehouse built by those who came before. Ah, yes. Those who ruled, reigned, and vanished from the world. Do we know what it is that will be held within? It could contain certain knowledge, perhaps a weapon, or something as yet unknown, unfathomable in its construction and purpose. It could be any of these things, or none of them. They are still an enigma, these precursors. But of one thing I am certain. Whatever waits behind those doors shall prove a great boon to us all. Or our enemies, should they find it first. They won't. You've seen to that. I assume you know where this storehouse is? Ah, Mr. Harrison. Gentlemen. How fair your calculations? I believe the site lies somewhere within this region. That's a lot of ground to cover. My apologies. Were that I could be more accurate. That's all right. It suffices for a start. And that is why we've called you here, Master Kenway. We'd like for you to travel to America, locate the storehouse, and take possession of its contents. I'm yours to command. Although a job of this magnitude will require more than just myself. Of course. Upon this paper are the names of five men sympathetic to our cause. Each is also uniquely suited to aid you in your endeavor. With them at your side, we'll want for nothing. Well, then I'd best be on my way. I knew our faith in you was not misplaced. We've booked you passage to Boston. Your ship leaves at dawn. Go forth, Haytham, and bring honor to us all. <laughs> 